Hello and welcome to another delicious, juicy, thick ribeye steak of Listenerland. <laughs> yeah, welcome to With chips. With chips. <laughs> With a Barnsley salad. <laughs> chips. <laughs> Yeah, we are often mentioned they actually we're actually called Whistleland these days, do we? I think every episode. Is yeah. it all? Every episode, yeah. yeah. Okay. So I, I think hope I'm proved wrong on that one. If you're new to the show, what we like to do is drink an arrangement of beverages of the alcoholic form and discuss the ins and outs and ongoings <laughs> of uh, music. Uh, it's basically just bitching about artists doing certain this and that. And if you like that sort of thing, like and subscribe. Ring that bell. Ring that bell. <laughs> Ring that bell. We are from the consumer angle. We've been music fans forever, and we just like music. So, you know, we're not celebrities. You might have gathered. Uh, but we just like music. So it's like our point of view, which is probably the common man's, hopefully the common man's point of view. You have to bring class into it, don't you? British, typical yeah, British. Typical. Oh, typical. Yeah. Americans don't care. It's the poppy syndrome. It's the poppy syndrome. So Stop. I heard something today, which I'm going to um, just run past you, because if I don't say it now, I'm going to forget, that um, I will listen to a, a, an interview with uh, Mr. Perry from Aerosmith. Ah, Joe Perry. And he says that uh, him and Mr. Tyler have Stephen got... Stephen Tyler. <laughs> Figure out that all the time. <laughs> Him, that they both have got <laughs> songs, as he put him, written under the bed. And he says, I'm not going to rule out a new Aerosmith album. Well, they did have toys in the attic, so it wouldn't be surprising that they've got toys so under the bed. I thought, or songs oh, under that'd be interesting. Yeah. And that weren't news today. Well, they're just preempting what's going to happen, aren't they? Mm. That's fair. They're just building Which up a I, bit. Yeah, I mean, I didn't think they'd do another up one. a bit of ripe. Yeah. Because, I mean, he's a bit vampire, isn't he? But it's not a full-time project, is it? No, but he is, I think he's in studios at the moment doing another album with vampires. Is and he's really? just finished a tour a few weeks ago. Right. Um, but no, he says that they both got uh, written songs under bed and um, he wouldn't be surprised to see a new album, which I thought, oh, that'd be good. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what direction it, it'd they're be taking. Right, that. Yeah, I think it will be something. Um, Tyler had a problem with his voice recently, or has he gone through an operation of it? Um, he has or, had issues with his voice. I don't know whether it were recent or it's been an ongoing thing, but he has had issues with his voice. But he's he's got a bit of a. But hopefully, he's got, he's got a bit of, of a court case going on, or a bit of a scandal <laughs> thing going on about bringing that girl up at borderline. Yeah, what? Well, no, because state didn't, line, didn't or did that, that get dropped? Didn't that get? What's this? thrown out the other month. Oh, other, I don't know. I missed other, that. Other, other week. When he was young, he got the permission of this girl's parents to take him on, so that he could take this girl on tour and she was 14. Right. And as as things have been doing lately, all this has come back to haunt him. Right. It's resurfaced and there were allegations being been thrown around and it's been thrown out now. I, I'm, I'm not saying it has. What I say is I seem to think it's ended, or it got thrown out, or he got off with it. I might um, be wrong on that, but I, I seem to think I've read that he got that he got quashed. But okay. uh, don't go because there, that. that period might, there, were, there were a lot doing the similar stuff. I mean, Bill Wyman did it, Bowie did it. I don't um, put Bill Wyman and Bowie Page in the same breath. It. Jimmy Page did it. it. Seems to be a magic number fourteen. I don't know why. <coughs> They were all 14. Uh, they were all 14. Uh, uh, it's not as interesting as 27, but... Sorry, new listeners. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you with consumer, it? And, uh, another, one, you. another one I heard today. Does anybody know what has been launched today? Well, uh, no. No? no. Um, so today Great was... ship, Bonamassa? <laughs> you know, you know it. No. So today is the launching of the new record label oh. called Bad Records. By whom? And it is owned by Mr. Brian Adams. Oh, I did see something Have about this. It? Yeah, 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 yeah. He's launched it today. Bad Records. And it is going to do two, its first two tracks that it will be pressing will be uh, two of his tracks that are written. I can't remember the names of them, but I do remember one was he did for Kiss. He wrote it for Kiss. 
or he did it as a duet with Kiss, but he's doing that on his own. He did it and with a duet with Kiss? He, he either did it with Kiss or he wrote it for Kiss. All oh, right. Um, is this just a project so he can... Is it called War Machine? Oh, I don't know. Something like that. But yeah, he launches his new... Is this so he can have other labels, other artists yeah, on yeah, it? Yeah. Or oh, it's yeah. not just for him? No, no, it's not just for him. It's going oh, to be right. a, 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 an ongoing thing where you okay. can go to his record label if you want to drop some on vinyl. Well, of thing. speaking of dropping on vinyl, Ooh. have you heard about what people have been having a little surprise in their bag when they bought a record? Oh, yes, I have. Third Man. A no-named album. Yeah. A white-sleeved yes. album in Detroit, Do you know what? I'd love one of Nashville, them. and London, because he's got a store in London. That's Third Man Records has a store in London, if you're from England. Yeah. Uh, Jack White has been releasing these unnamed albums. It's just stick it in people's uh, plastic bags. Not Jack White, but the staff, uh, when they buy an album. Sticking it in. If they buy something from a shop, they, they get just... it in. It's got no writing on it. Yeah. No, it's a plain album. Yeah. It said, no, it says no. Uh, it's just, what it, is it the what it in say? the plastic itself in the vinyl itself? Is that white? Uh, Smoking white into it. Is it like stood on a big ball or sat on a big it, ball? No, it's just, no. That's just a picture. I don't know what you mean oh, about. It's yeah. just a plain one. Uh, but it's encouraging people to rip the album and uh, put it online. I'd love one of them. Yeah, it's just because of what it is. Yeah. And not because I'm going to think, oh, right, in 20 I years' did. time it'll be worth something. It's just because it's... It's very punk, oh, well, isn't it? would have thought of Just that. to, like, slip it in. I yeah. guess the closest... Really? I guess the closest to that that I can think of is when Prince gave away his album in the Daily Mail. Or what about you too? when they made you have an album when you bought a... Oh, that, yeah. yeah. On uh, iTunes. iTunes, you to delete it, They yeah. made, insisted that you had it. Yeah, you, yeah, you had no option. You couldn't get bleeding rigid, could no, you? No, I was annoying that. Yeah, but I like that. I yeah. like that idea. I heard it the last couple of days and I thought, oh, right, that, yeah, I like that idea. But what's interesting enough, I mean, it's great marketing because it gets people talking about it. If he'd have just released an album, we wouldn't be talking about it now. No. But the fact that it's been snuck into people's bags, yeah, it's, it's a, a nice away. little surprise. It's a giveaway, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, but that will become instantly collectible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very much so. And they're going to go into third man. Just to try and get one of them. Yeah. So it's like reverse psychology, isn't it? Yeah. They're going to go, in, oh, yeah, he's giving away this free album. Let me get to third man, buy a baseball cap, and they might give you a new album. Yeah. That's basically what, what's going to happen. So this past week, um, as as ever with uh, the Listen On podcast, I've been sent on a journalistic trip. I have been sent to report on the ins and out of a, a local, not local, a festival, a festival of latitude. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it was a wonderful festival. It's a very family-oriented festival. If you go, uh, you have attempts to go to uh, latitude, it's very clean, it's very neat. Everyone's lovely. There's a good range of music and comedy, and they have all these like stages in the woods and stuff, and they spray paint sheep pink, and there's a stage on the lake where they do like theatre and ballet. Um, so it's all very picturesque. Carry on, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> what, what, is it? It, it, what is it with you today? Is it some kind of a <laughs> practical joke against me tonight? Everything's exploding. Um, okay, carry on. So there was Pretend one. Ar- nothing's happened. There was one artist that I really wanted to see out of a lot of them, and it was an artist called Seema, and she's an Irish artist and a band called Seema. And Seemap. Seemat. Seemat. C A C M A T. Right. Um, and she's very like, you know, take me as I am. She doesn't try and look pretty. She's like, she takes the mick out of her own image, and she's got like gold things on her teeth and. And so, large life character, but really good singer, really good performer. Um, not choreographed performing, like really, like yeah. you know, thrashing around with the guitars. And then she pulled out of, of Latitude because she wasn't happy with the fact that Latitude is sponsored by Barclay Cards, and Barclay Cards has got association with funding Israel and war and all that sort of stuff. Right. So then Latitude ditched uh, Barclay Card as a sponsor, and she came back on, and she decided that uh, she would donate her fee to uh, things against war aid, uh, against like war, you know, like guns and stuff like that. Fair enough. She's an up and coming artist. She's only got like an EP and an album out and one of her songs has been nominated. I don't know what for, but something good. Maybe a BAFTA or something. Um, a Grammy, that's it. 
Um, it's a brave move when you're just stepping out into it. Yeah. Because you, you can afford to do that when you've established yourself. Well, this is quite yeah, established. Like you too. Yeah. Well, yeah. You yeah. can you can afford to do it when you've, you've gained a little bit of cred, but she hasn't yet. Has she? She's gained the cred through a, probably a political stance maybe and more you don't, than anything you, else. You don't get that very often these days with new artists. No, you don't. It's, it's on, more about it's what a quick they grab, want, isn't it? Because the longevity in the career isn't probably there, but it's a quick grab. But um, I like the fact that she did that. Uh, so she came back on. Uh, so I, I went to the main arena, the main stage, because there's multiple stages. I went to the main stage. There's loads of people there. Well, she's got this is about maybe 20 minutes until she comes on. Loads of people around. I get a tap on the shoulder. Want to buy some of this? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody was selling some Jersey Royals. <laughs> uh, no, thank you. I get another tap on the shoulder. Um, for those of you who don't know, they were potatoes. Um, do you want to watch this from the backstage? Excuse me? Do you want to come backstage and, and watch it from side on? Are you a CMAT fan? I'm like, yeah, okay. Thinking it was a bit of a con. Something's going to happen in a minute. Uh, and they said, yeah, well, you know, you can just follow us. We can walk, walk you around. Me and my partner, Stacey. He says, the only thing is, uh, you're going to have to drink your beer because you can't take beer up there. I'd just been to the bar, got myself a big, big, you know, cardboard cup. That wasn't a problem. Right back, we walk past all the buses. You've got uh, the darkness. So you've got Keen and uh, Duran Duran's bus and all where they're all staying and stuff. And you've got to be careful because it's a working area. There's lots of cables. And you go up the barrier and you walk past all these things and stuff. And there's people with headphones on, you know, pretending they're working. Permission to launch. Five. five. <laughs> uh, uh, and then we just basically at side of stage. And, and then see Matt come on. And they're doing this amazing performance, and I'm watching it, and it's like uh, I'm I'm on the stage, or the main the main stage. The audience is there, a sea of people there, and the band that I wanted to watch it, I'm on the same platform, and I'm just watching them across the room. Um, and then Stacy goes to me, "Is that Rick Astley?" And I look behind me, "That's that's Rick Astley." And Rick Astley's got his acoustic, and he's trying to he's doing something. He was walking back back and forth past us. Looking stressed. We didn't bother him, you know. Um, uh, it's tiny shoulders. Tiny shoulders. Yeah. Not as broad as you think he's going to be. Don't know what I expected. I mean, I never really expected... Narrow-shouldered man. I don't know. Not that it's like a triangle form, but like I just never expected to come across Rick Astley. Yeah. Uh, no. And um, <laughs> and you can see keen stuff and uh, oh, people right, yeah, keep wing yeah. around. And anyway, after after that, we were heading out and I, uh, I bumped into C6 Steve's drummer. Right. Because I just watched their set. I gave him a little handshake, said, I love you, sir. And he was, oh, thank you. And then we mingled off. Um, well, that was brilliant. And it was amazing. Really good experience. So did you find out why you, they tapped you on the shoulder? Why did they pick you? What it was... Is it because you were tall and you were blocking everybody else's view? Well, the, the thing is, they could spot raw talent. Right. <laughs> and, you know, yeah. I don't know. I don't know why they picked... But what happened in the woods? Um, so we also... St- so we didn't stick... There was, you know, sometimes things clash. Did you get to I-5? Rick Astley? Yeah. And I just, I just let him be. I just let him be. I, I, you know. Still, still, still only one that's, yeah. still only yeah. one that I-5s. Yeah, yeah. Um, but Steve Tyler was there and high-fived him. Um, so, he says, as your dad. He says, as your dad. I've still got the, the chicken wire mesh on my hand. Um, so we didn't watch Rick Astley's set. Even though it's like, everyone's going to know Rick Astley from Never Going to Give You Up and some of those 80s pop songs, but he's it's, it's had other albums out. And he, I think over the past couple of years, he's had a number one album. He's, he's got a really good voice. Um, we were watching something else at the time. I think we went to see Stuart Lee or whatever, the comedian. But then we're, there's this like trailer park area in the woods where it's like caravans and like clotheslines. It's all a bit like nestled away in the woods. Um, and then all of a sudden, Rick Astley pops out with his band of a caravan and it's like a house band and they're just doing covers he's just played his big gig it's a bit sweary because he's had a few drinks and people are shouting out what songs they want to hear he's playing Daft Punk uh, Get Lucky and he's making up swear word songs and he's wearing a hazmat yeah it was just really cool but you soon get used to that view backstage yeah yeah I bet you do it's a really like and a really unique way to see the band that you actually want to see of the whole festival Mm. It was like the gods had shone upon me and said, you, raw talent boy. <laughs> you are chosen. <laughs> come hither, see the great cables and men, come with, on. He- men with earphones. Louis, come on down. Come on down. <laughs> or up, I rather. Or up. But yeah, that was, that was amazing. 
we were talking about this when he was telling me about it when he came back. And, you know, I got the experience with Darius Rucker, similar sort of thing. And it is infectious, that sort of feeling. And you can see how they become embroiled in that because you, you just standing on edge of stage and, and soaking all that up because mm. the audience is facing you. And you're not, you're, not, you're not the performer, but, you know, you're just soaking all that up as well. Imagine if you're the performer. Oh, it's the it's, best yeah. drug in yeah. the world, isn't yeah. it? Well, I went on the side of the stage or the front of the stage, but, you know, I was in view of the audience because I, I walked around things. I got a black and white shirt on. And you could tell that people may have thought that was part of the band because people start going, woo, woo, woo. And, no, it's not him. No, it's, no, not, it's, it's, not, some, them, not, it's not him. <laughs> and then she came on, woo. Yeah. We should have just gone, woo. Yeah. My time to ruin the show. Yeah. <laughs> streak. <laughs> but there would have been people taking photographs of you. Oh, yeah. Thinking that he were. Yeah, they'd probably think, oh, wow. I've got a picture of somebody. Somebody. In a black and white shirt. But you can see how, how they get wrapped up in that. It's so easy. Oh, yeah. You can imagine yeah. it's so easy. I was telling somebody at work about it, and they said, how did you, how did you do that? And I said, oh, somebody just tapped me on the shoulder. And they're like, if you're going to lie to me, you come on, just do something better than that. And they're like, that's it. So literally, I was a sea of people. I was tapped on the shoulder. I mean, I could have been groomed by a male, like an out there. You want to see it from the back of the stage? Yeah. <laughs> come with me. <laughs> but were you stood near the front of the stage? Um, not right at the front. No, no. But it's central. Stood, just there were around. lots of people around us. Yeah, it was a busy. It was a busy area. Yeah, it was packed out. So because of this. Palestine and Israel thing, and she didn't want to, you know, she pulled out originally. She did this thing where she got into the crowd and she sort of, she was actually in the crowd walking around singing a little bit, and then she got back out. And there was maybe a stage thing where somebody had stuck something on her back. Really? Saying F Barclays. Oh, right. And she turned around and she was like, oh, I didn't do this, so I can't get in trouble. Right. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. She's making a name for herself, mm. isn't she? Yeah, she's good. She's really good. If you don't know about CMAT, check CMAT out. She's really good. Uh, she's one to watch, I think, for the future. And doing it for the art's sake. Is I she think. a young lass or? Uh, she's uh, early 30s, I think, something like that. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. 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 She's not doing bad if she's doing festival, because the Latitude Festival is not a small festival, is she? Is it? No, no. But she's not got a lot of material on market, has she? Uh, no, but she's got enough for a set. You, you know, you got Kasabian playing and... Oh, I'll tell you, an artist that I saw that I was very impressed with and I wasn't expecting to be. Um, what do you call her now? Uh, Colin ba Colleen Bailey Ray. Oh, right, yeah. Who did that song in the noughties, Girl, Put Your Records On. Girl, oh, right, put yeah. your records... Very poppy. Yeah. yeah. She's turned in, she's, well, she's flourished into this really like interesting soul jazzy artist. Um, that was her first love though, that jazzy yeah. style. I've heard interviews with her. Her and her band and the music she's producing at the moment is very, very good. And she's got an extremely good voice. Yes, yes. And she's creating and some I very... And down the jazzy road. Yeah, but not, not, it's not, it's not, not weird jazz. Not jazz it's, jazz. No, it's not weird jazz. Uh, it's not jazz where you're not going to get it. It's very soulful, funky vibe. You know, you know early Amy Winehouse right. jazz? Yeah. It's like that. It's like that type of stuff. Mm, yeah, but more of a, a... The more of a swing to it. Well, more of a black style to it. Okay. Um, very interesting. Uh, if you haven't heard any of her new stuff, try and check it out because it's yeah, worth well. a shout. I was extremely impressed with her. Uh, also, uh, Alison Golfrap from the band Golfrap, still as cool as ever. Yeah. Yeah, she's a very, uh, I think she's like in her 50s, but she's super cool. Super cool. Super cool. Very cool. Super Was it a good festival? It's a very good festival. It's a good festival if you've never been to a festival before, uh, or if you've got family um, and you just want a nice You should time. dip your toe in this festival uh, puddle. And take your good lady and enjoy it next year. It's only at Suffolk. Don't yeah. you, mate? Yeah. Yeah. It's very, very good. And the campsites are very nice as well. Everyone's very respectful. What hotels like? Oh. <laughs> I did pay extra for uh, nice toilets and showers though in the morning. Is there no power shower in a tent? You can take a horse pipe if you want. <laughs> no hotels? Yeah. 
the, maybe. Oh, what a nylon hotel. No. Mm. Can you go in and out on I the same path? I think you can, path? yeah. I think, so yeah. you can get an hotel and then, P- and then go back. Yeah. Yeah, so it's more like me. All right. I'm not missing that, innit? You're missing the festival experience. No, because I won't leave all day. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be there nice and early. Half a six. After in my bed. Pa- af- in af- bed. After my power shower. Yeah. <laughs> and my roundup of Sky News. <laughs> I won't, go, I won't go to bed before the news, dear. <laughs> Brace yourself. <laughs> nope, they haven't done the weather yet. Wait, wait for it. As I suspected, cloudy. <laughs> so, yeah, that was Latitude 2024. Very good. Nice little report, that. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, it makes me want to go. You should. Yeah. I had, I had, I had lunch. Cheesy chips across from Damien Lewis. Really? Is yep. that is the, is that casual, is it? Yeah, we weren't dressed formally. No, what I mean is... <laughs> it wasn't like, a black tie event. No, what I mean is... It's <laughs> that, Damien, it's, cheesy chips. It's, yes, thank it's you. It's that relaxed. <laughs> yeah, they're all, they're all mingling about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you, you, do, you don't get that sort of mingling at Gladstone, do you? Well, you do, but it's just that it's bigger. Yeah. Uh, one good thing comparatively to Glastonbury is that... Um, there's more space at Latitude in the in like the food areas. Like walking around, you don't feel as confined. Like oh, right. Latitude is so busy, you can feel a bit overwhelmed by the crowds. Right. Whereas um, Latitude, not so much, which is fine. It's, you don't feel as pressured by like you know if you just want to, a bit of space. Go you, get some cheesy chips. Yeah, you can you can get some. You can find it. Uh, but Glastonbury seem they keep they seem to like. Be selling more tickets each year, and I think it's becoming a bit of an issue for people. Where it's, it's getting a bit too crowded. He has only got a certain amount of land that he uses, hasn't he? Yeah, and it is full every year. Yeah, I think they need to do a bit of work about their lineups and when they're on as well, because a lot of people are just being drawn to the main stage rather than seeing other people and like not yeah. staggering things enough. But we digress. We do. Well, no, it's all music. It's all music. All music. Not soul music. It's all music. Boom, boom. Thank you. What you got? Uh, you look like you're on the edge of some trying to tell us something there. No, no, I'm just listening. I'm just listening. I have actually got a, a, ah, a, 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 a new album. You've got a new album. So this is this is from the most I would probably say the most popular figure ever. Ever? Ever. The most what, popular in music? figure. In anything. In most anything. Popular figure. What, is it the figure depends. a key word? Is there a reason you're saying figure? It's a figure. It's a it's of your imagination. Everybody from what well, let's say one year old, one year to ninety nine year old. No, this figure. Cliff it's, Richard. Jesus. It's, Jesus. It's Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus is dropping a new album. I would say is bigger. Bigger than Jesus? Yes, because the if, you, if you showed a two and three year old a picture of Jesus, don't know it all. If you showed a picture of Mickey Mouse, oh. they would know who they are. Yeah, okay. So okay. Mickey Mouse and friends are fetching a pop, rock, and punk album out called The Whole New Sound. And it's going to be covers with different bands. But they're not saying which band are going to be on the albums yet. All they have said is one of the band's lead is a is a band called Simple Plan. Right. They, it sounds like a simple plan. They will be on. They are one of the bands on the album. And in the statement, <laughs> and and it's this bit that made me laugh. If Dolly can do it, so can Mickey Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> it's just got an element of cringeworthiness about it to me. Though. I just Whoa, found it. If funny Dolly can do it, yeah, it's so. marketing, isn't it? Well, I mean, yeah. Disney's known for bringing out artists, you know, Britney Spears, Justin Timberlake, all them, like yeah. Miley Cyrus, Demi Lovato. Yeah, it goes on and on and on. You know, a lot have made it through the old Disney world. I mean, Timberlake and all them. They all came through. Britney. Yeah, they all came through. Disney thing, didn't they? Didn't want she. Um, I know they didn't have a stakeholder. Uh, Miley Cyrus, want she. Miley Cyrus, Angelina, not Angelina, uh, Christina Aguilera. Yeah, she was. Yeah. Oh, she was with Mickey Mouse Club, wasn't yeah, she? Mini. Mini Mini Mouse, yeah, Minnie. Minnie Mouse. Goofy. Pluto. So, Apparently, they're all going to be on album. Oh, uh, okay, Mickey. Oh, Mickey, Minnie, Donald Duck, Goofy. Oh, no. 
Yeah, all them lot. I just, uh, it just thought that made me laugh. If Dolly can do it, so can Mickey Mouse. So, <laughs> bands. I just brilliant. Yeah? <laughs> Uh, I'm going to refer to my notes here. Where have all the bands gone? <coughs> yeah, where have the where have all the bands gone? I think if I might draw your attention, Millard, to a statement I made a few weeks ago. Our bands dying. Where have think, all the bands gone? I think, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, I, where have they gone? And, and I've got some some stats to figure, to, to back this up. Right in the eighth. So this is all Ooh, the bands oh, yeah. that it, within a, a year or half a year. Um, that reached a, like weeks in the chart. So if you add all these number ones up, this is how many weeks of bands were uh, in the charts at number one, right? In the 80s, 146 weeks there were bands at number one, right? right? Okay. In the first half of the 90s, 141 bands were at number one. Yeah? Right. In the first half of this decade, yep. three weeks. Good Lord. And one was uh, a Radio 1, like, comp band of other artists, a bit like a Band-Aid thing. Yeah. Uh, two was the Beatles when they really re-released that old song. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the other one was Little Mix. Uh, Where yeah. have all the bands gone? They've gone. And why? Is it the money? Is it the ego? They don't want to split the, the attention? I don't know. I think it's a combination of all things. I think it's a crying shame. It's, it's a massive shame. Yeah. Is yeah. it just that there's not enough money to sustain paying for people? There is bands out there. Let's make that perfectly clear. There is bands out there, but they're not. They're not heading in the direction of the charts anymore. Well, not, the, you, like the, 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 the top consumer, ten of this, the top yeah. ten of this week. The consumer is not listening to them. The consumer is not listening. They, they want instant gratification, and they don't want to be introduced with, with a band. This is the modern way of doing it. If you look at the top ten. Or it might be even the top 20 for this week. And I don't know what it is. I have no idea what it is because I stopped looking at that years ago. I would be quite confident in saying, I bet there's only three bands in that top 20. If you're lucky. And yeah. one of them is probably going to be Coldplay. Ooh. Yeah. And the other one will be... Oh, I don't know. It'll be some... Re-release of something, it, but there's no bands anymore. There's no bands. It's a big subject, and I, the, I don't think there's a, a, a big answer or a good enough answer for it. it the, the record labels aren't putting the money into five or four people. There was a certain purge for three people bands. You know. Do you think bands will come back? Yes. Oh, I think everything comes around in a circle, and I think yes, they will. Okay. But I think it'll take seven years. Because okay. things have a cycle of about seven years. Yeah, seven years hurdle. Well, so a certain song has overtaken Wonderwall uh, being the UK's biggest selling single. And it is? Oh, what do you think it is? What What do you think is, has t overtaken Wonderwall as being like the cliche, oh, here's Wonderwall and the, and the acoustic. Is, God, it, yeah, is, it, is, it, is it of that same period? Uh, I'll give you a clue. They're American, but a lot of people thought they were English. Oh, uh, what, is it Killers? Yeah, Mr. Brightside. Mr. Has overtaken Mr. Wonderwall uh, as UK's yeah. biggest selling single. It's better than Wonderwall for a start. Yeah, I thought it was either going to be Killers or that's a good guess. Sex on Fire. Oh, uh, Kings of Leon. Kings yeah. Of Leon. Uh, yeah. I think the killers are more, more mainstream, actually. Then, yeah, maybe, than, yeah, maybe. But, but that song was absolutely massive, weren't it? Yeah, yeah. I always liked um, Killers. What well, <laughs> at one point? Yeah, yeah. What the call lead singer then? Brandon Flowers. Brandon Flowers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doesn't drink. He's a Mormon. Loves Travis. Oh, good. So they a formed, lot of people do. They formed because of why does it always rain on me? So they were really oh, yeah. inspired by that, and and now they're the Travis and the band are good friends. Yeah, uh, and they've supported each other and stuff like that. Yeah, Travis are still out there doing things. Yeah, aren't he's they? dying his hair red. His what hair he's got left, and they're still out there. Yeah. Great, great band, them Travis. Yeah, because they had that the, period. They had that. They come from something different, didn't they? Where they were 
I don't know. I just always found them a little bit different. They, I think that they brought in that indie scene, and, uh, and, they, and then then Coldplay really, came really and sort of like good. took it and just dragged them. What out. was that other band that came out at the same just after them? Coldplay. Uh, I think no. Keen. There, there was Keen, but there, there was another one, and they did something called was it Marathon or something like that. Oh, and I think they've just got back together as you've well. You've got Star Sailor, you've got Embrace, no. you've got uh, ooh, Night Street Preacher. No, that was like No, well, we'll have to leave that one because it was clutching at straws a little bit. But I thought... Athlete? Athlete. You've got Wires coming That's out. the fella. That's the fella. Right. Yeah. I thought they were of that same ilk. Nah. No, I thought they were. Okay. But they, they never really... But we saw a band, though, didn't we? We thought they were going to be the next big thing. Yeah. Brilliant the, band. They just did two, three albums and... Three th- albums, and then he he, he left into... It fizzled out, and they were called... Uh, Temperance Movement. Tem- Temperance Movement, yeah. yeah. I often Phil think... Phil Campbell. Phil Campbell, that's right. I often think, what happened to the Fatellas? Do the Fatellas. Fatellas, yeah. I well, no, I don't know much about them. Do, 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 do. Yeah, yeah. They had this a big, they had a big like few, maybe three hits off well, the album. Are they still going? In, I don't. I don't just in festival. Uh, no, but I don't see anything of them. They had this <laughs> yeah. huge album, like big three like party tracks, mm. um, and then disappeared. We were like them that. that um, Zootons. They did that song and Amy Winehouse covered it. Zootons. Yeah. They did, never did, they never did much. Well, he developed a, a serious drug and alcohol problem. Uh, but now they're back well, that's together. Not they're back together. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they have this but will they be able to come back to anything like they was potentially gonna do? I don't think they will. Well, it's like that band in the early in the sixties they were a shadow of the former selves. Um, not the shadows. The shadows, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Never really could, uh, you know. Well, they they lasted quite a long time actually, yeah, because well. in that in that period, bands used to last for two years, and that were the max. Well, they pro- it was probably less than that. They didn't see a future. It was it wasn't really a career, was it? No, no. The bands chopped and changed that quickly back in them days. Sort of liberating in a way. I don't know. Not, they're they're like liberating as in there's no expectation. Yeah, I guess so. Like yeah, you want you can chop yeah. and change. There's no expectation. Yeah. Well, all them bands. I mean, they're only. Well, Fleetwood Mike is a prime example. How many members were in Fleetwood Mike? There must have been thirty before they got to the second <laughs> week. Christy McVie and, yeah. and and they're quite a few. Lindsay Buckingham and them. Hmm. There were lords. There were lords. They're just fetching the new album, aren't they? Are they really? Well, I said new album. What they're doing is they. Or fetching, uh, so let me get, um, give me one second. I wrote uh, it down. At Fleetwood Mac concerts, do you think that they sell merchandise of Mac coats? Because that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what they used to do back in the day? You know how people go dressed up as the, the artist they're going to see? Right. People used to go dressed up as Stevie Nicks. Okay. And there'd be girls there dressed up in, in, in chiffon and, and lace and top hat that she used to wear on stage. And they used to go dressed up as that. What? 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 Can you... Can you... What? The best I ever did was a tartan scarf. <laughs> when I went to see faces. Because you, you, I, I, I couldn't get my hair to stand up and it will not stand up now. But... That's what people used to do. They used to go dressed up as the artist. And I had to laugh recently because I heard a story about, you know, uh, and he's, he's, not, he's not popular, but uh, Marilyn Manson. Right. When he was, when he was young, he, he made up this, well, he said that he had a very disturbed upbringing when he was a child. He was, his parents were very dysfunctional. His father was a alcoholic and abusive. His mother uh, had to go and work the streets to put bread on the table. Cause like a road a, sweeper. Yes, a road sweeper. Uh, <laughs> had a lot of uncles. And uh, it was desperate times, but, it, you know, he, he persevered. And that's some of his background as to why he's the way he is. It turns out it wasn't like that at all. Really? He's quite a privileged, spoiled little child. Ah, oh, well, that makes more sense, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah, and he wanted things, and he asked. He only had to ask for things, and he got them. Mm. In fact, he was a big Kiss fan. 
Uh. And his father used to take him to Kiss concerts, and they both used to wear the makeup of the act, uh, the artist they particularly like. So can you imagine a, a, a little Marilyn Manson dressed up as? I don't know. Gene Simmons. Gene Simmons. <laughs> and the father used to get the makeup on as well and he used to take him. Now, this is a deprived childhood, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot, I cannot imagine. I mean, uh, to make that story up and then the reality comes out, it just shows you what a, a shallow little oink, oink yeah. he is. I can't imagine my dad taking me to seat faces dressed up as Rod Stewart. No, that won't work. There's a story about David Bowie taking his son to see a gig and it was like some sort of punk band. And he is, I can't remember who it were, uh, but David talks about how, it was his son called Duncan, and he says, I was, uh, Duncan was a fan of, of such and such. Um, and I said I'd take him to go and see the gig. And it's like really exciting. He came downstairs and he got his hair all dyed and stuff and he got like all this clobber on and he, he thought to himself, I'm not taking you yeah. dressed like that. Well, and that got was, one that of, was the what, uh, documentary. Got, yeah, and he got one of Bowie's suits on us. Yeah, that, 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 it, that was it, the documentary about Bowie that it, they did. I, I am not going to take you looking like that. And he thought to himself, well, oh, actually. Because the, 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 the film did and it didn't come out well 10 years later, did it? And yeah, and it's like, you are not going out walking like that. Yeah, Ooh, but that's then he, awkward. Then he realised mm, yeah. things he did. <laughs> but yeah, going back to the Fleetwood Mac, they're releasing the live perform live recordings of the Mirage tour in 1982 from LA. Okay, and you get six unreleased tracks on it. Yeah, I'd like them to put these things out at the cinema. <laughs> in what a cinema? Yeah. What? Oh, oh is it filmed? Is it a filmed game? It, it, no, it, no, it's a. I know. Um, album. Oh, okay. It's Sorry, I thought, it was, I thought it was a film. No. Yeah, I'd like them to put film stuff out like that. Yeah. So you can go to films and see it. Yeah, I'd like to see it. Go to, what, concerts? Go to cinemas. Yeah, yeah. we, we, we spoke about concert. like this experience, yeah. but I mean, if there's a film gig like, I don't know, like they have loads, of, there's an endless amount of film gigs, isn't there? But like, it'd be nice to be able to like capture these at yeah. a cinema experience or, or yeah. a, a small theatre experience. I think, I'm, I'm surprised that's never caught on, you know. Mm. I mean, I know they tried it, and you have got your you have got your uh, theatre cinema, and you've, you've got, got your Taylor opera Swift cinema. That's done it. Sorry, Taylor Swift has that. Yeah, it, she? well, she will. She's done everything. I've said it. I've said it before, though, Hunter. You should have a gig channel. I mean, it, 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 you can pay to watch any gig from anywhere in the world, and if there's no gigs on on a Pacific track, why don't they could put Live Aid on again? I don't think that's or, coming. Or yeah, Woodstock's I don't think that's on coming. again. But I also think or, that... Or, like you just said, or, I don't know, a Beatles concert, or where you can... Even if it's only 50p. Especially with, like, AI now. I, I don't think that a concert is something of, like, a, a shared concert. experience. Yeah, but you, yeah, can't, yeah. but you can't always get to, like... Rio de Janeiro to watch Rolling Stones. No, but like, no. No, so do you no. know like when you see but, a, when you see but, a comedy film at a cinema? But for fifty quid, you'll find yourself laughing. You can, yeah, I know. But what I'm saying is, but it. for fifty quid, you can get to Rio de Janeiro. You can watch the concert. In yeah, your own yeah, 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 yeah. But you're in your own living room, and I think it's, it's so. You, so what you said is you won't pay fifty pound no, to watch. No, that. no, no. That's what, what I mean. Is it? But I'm so you can get to see it. It's like I think it's a great challenge. It's like when you travel. It's like when you travel. If you go on an ex and, and, and you travel somewhere to a new part that you've never been before, it's always better when you've got somebody with it to share, to share oh, the yeah. experience with. Yeah. And I think a concert, I think a concert is exactly the same, whether it's on a big screen or a live performance. It's better in a group of people, not sat on your settee at home. I do think that's going. What you're saying, I think it's great. I think that's inevitable that we'll get something like that. But I, I, wish I, I, really I do hope. believe that if you have a what, how many does a cinema hold? 50, 60, 70? Well, the, you, can have, you people. can have smaller screens, but you could take a concert, and especially with AI, so we know that AI can enhance images and it can enhance, like, you know, it can make things 4K and stuff like that. So you, you could really enhance the quality of the footage that's been filmed on. Also, AI can enhance audio. We, we've got that from the Beatles Get Back documentary where they've pulled out different channels and, you know, you can really remix the audio. So you could have a rough audio from the 70s mm. and you could turn it into something quite special and uh, dynamic I, th I think it's like i think the technology is there and i think the audience is there oh, yeah. for something like uh, something a bit more <laughs> real and you could put like we said before you could essentially you could you could strip a flick of mac out 
and you can put them on this like this stage where they do a couple of songs. Uh, what's what's the most popular by the audience that's going to see it? So you can like imagine there's like an iPad and you, you click your songs, right? Yeah. And then that, after that's, that, that's a new technology side. Of after it, that, yeah. you've got BB King doing a song, and after that, you've got Steve Ray Vaughan going to Texas Flood. And they, they come walking in after oh, each yeah, other. Oh yeah, I get all that's that. That's the new technology side of it. And it will. And I agree with him when he's saying that it, we're, we're going to get a channel that's going to show that type of stuff. Brilliant. But you know, like gigs from. 70s, 80s, and 90s. Whenever. Live Aid. Live Aid. Yeah, Prime put, example, yeah, Live Aid. Put them on. Put Brilliant. them on. But it's a shared Brilliant. experience. Isn't but it? you could get lads round on a Saturday afternoon. Exactly. You could get lads round on a Saturday afternoon. You could get a, you could get a barbecue going. You could get all your. Yeah. You could get a big screen up. What? But what, you could do that, that would now. Be better, though. Yeah. You could do that now. What you put it on? Woodstocks. Yeah, but you, really? You, oh, go on then. You could put Live Aid on now, but imagine if they, put, if they played, if they had an afternoon. From twelve o'clock till whenever it finishes, com- like comparatively time wise, they play it live. Aid. A lot of people turn up. You can go back and forth to the bar because you know, let's say some there's a turnaround of bands or someone's got on that you're not bothered about. You just nip to the bar. You come back and they've got the like, big screen. It feels like you're watching it from the audience. That'd be great. That would be great. Oh yeah, well, go, or oh, an outside, yeah, an outside oh, cinema. Oh, an, an outside cinema. Yeah, it's yeah. what I like to call options. And there is a lot of options there. Why are they not being, like, fulfilled? Why are they not, like, I being explained to these options? Because people usually jump at these chances, don't they? Elon? Elon! You, I, if you're listening... Let's, let's talk. Come on. Yeah, put your finger out. Wayne, what's the channel? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, to, not MTV. I want a geek <laughs> channel. <laughs> MT me. <laughs> yeah, I think it's coming. Well, I wish it had you I'm not getting no younger. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can select what you want then, can't you? Yeah, I mean, it'd be brilliant, wouldn't it? I can you imagine they sat there on a Saturday night and there's no to watch and you think... Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's, Penny's just dropped, Penny's just let's, dropped. Let's, let's have a look. If it starts, this channel, and he invites us round for a barbie, you know what we're going to be watching, don't you? Joe. There you go, there you go. Yeah, but it'd be a bit weird. Come round, have, have a barbie. It just it puts TV on. Oh, it's channel, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. Joe, you've done it again. <laughs> you've done it again. <laughs> you know, you can't watch Joe every week, no. Why? No. So, um, who is the only musician to get a sculpture in Statuary Hall in the US Capitol? Johnny Cash. Well done. <laughs> How on earth would you have guessed that? If it wasn't for me know. stating out of, con- out of camera... Johnny Cash has got a statue at uh, US. <laughs> I read it. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually going to write that. Ah, uh, so. Did you burst your bubble? Yes. <sighs> Johnny Cash has got a statue in uh, the US Capitol in the Statutory Hall, mm. which is pretty cool. Yeah. 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 Oh, I, I doubt it's the one where he's given the finger. No, I doubt it's, it's, it's going to be that one. No, it's not. The, um... He was a complex character, old Cash, weren't he? He's only, he was. He's only musician, isn't he, to do it? Yeah. He was an interesting character. I mean, he, he had a very good uh, biopic with Joaquin Phoenix playing him. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's the same person that directed that that's and directing Ray. the Dylan one. Oh, okay, right. And he's also done the Raiders at Lost Ark and things like that, that trilogy yeah. or that franchise. Yeah. Yeah, he's... he's yeah, yeah, you know, we'll see how it works out. So he's, he's famous for resurrecting the dead. <laughs> Mm. Well, Dylan's not dead yet, but you know. Oh. Would you watch? W- w- will you watch the Dylan? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, you. I have nothing against it. I, I think T- Timothy Chalamet is a good actor. Yeah, to be fair to you. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, he was good I, in yeah. Jones, and he did that. I didn't. I haven't seen the chocolate thing he did. He's done a couple of Wes Anderson stuff. He's quite. Yeah. In, in yeah, he's, and he started off as theatre. But he was so. in Homeland, you know. You know that TV series that we, me and your mum raved about. Oh, my old mate uh, Damien Lewis. That I had chips with. Sorry? My old mate, Damien Lewis, that I had cheesy chips with. Cheesy chips, yeah. Cheesy Homeland. Chips. Yeah, yeah, he was in that, yeah. Yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he was, he was, yeah, he was one of the fr- kids that were in that the series. The schizophrenic. Yeah. What were I saying? Homeland. No, before then. Uh, Doesn't matter. Oh, I know what Like and subscribe. Yeah. Uh, this, Oh, Wayne's got a bit of a fizz on. Like I say, we can afford better beers that aren't going to explode on us. In date beers, if you subscribe, yes. it's a guarantee. Get <laughs> swimming, rag, lad. Aye. Right, <laughs> uh, and on that note, goodbye.